let's dive in and talk a, a little bit about Twitter. Now, anybody been watching the Lions matches over the last few weeks? Anyone got any interest in, uh, in rugby? So the Lions tour in Australia at, at the moment has been going on for a few weeks, and the test match has just started last Saturday. Um, they, for me, are a good example of how Twitter has changed the view uh, the view and the coverage of real events around the world, because we do see that when events happen in the real world, they also happen on Twitter. This picture here is of Sam Warburton, he's the, ca he's the captain of the Lions, uh, just running out on the pitch before one of the matches in the last week. And this is a very typical kind of outside-in view of one of these matches. In all, in all former Lions tours, in, in, in big sporting events or any other events, um, these, these kind of outside-in views are quite common. Typically in the sporting arena, they're through TV or through other forms of traditional media like newspapers, and they tend to be focused on what goes on on the pitch. And it's an interesting view of the world, but it's not the only view. And I think what Twitter has enabled us to see over the last few years is more of an inside-out view, more of an insider view. And so this, this example here is just another angle change on the same story, which is this is... Uh, this is taken the night before the first test match last Saturday when Sam Warburton, the captain, is being presented with his first ever Test Lions jersey by, by Ian McGeekin. And this was, this was taken inside, uh, inside uh, one of the, the locker rooms. And it's not flash. It's not particularly polished. Even the, the image itself is uh, a little hazy. But somehow it's natural and also it's authentic. And for anybody who's following uh, this tour, um, and you might be following some either current players or, or, uh, or former players, you'll see lots of these little insider angles on the same event. And so you're no longer looking at what's just going on out on the pitch. You can also see another perspective. And I think that highlights the remarkable thing about Twitter. It's, it, it allows you to see the world through the eyes of somebody else, and it gives you this insider view, this first-person perspective. Now, this is a campaign that caught my eye. I know there are a lot of advertising people in the room, and this is a slightly risky one for this early in the morning, but let me describe it to you. So uh, this, is, this is in the run-up to the second Lions test against Australia, which is happening on Saturday in Melbourne. And the, uh, the company is uh, Sportsbet, which is an online betting company in Australia, and they have painted the world's largest picture in the fields outside Melbourne International Airport on the flight path to greet Lions players and visitors on the way in. And um, so let me just read out the tweet for you. Uh, check out how we're getting behind the Lions, ahem, sorry, the Wallabies. And, and if you can't quite see the image, just to make it even worse. So this, I think, is a great example of integrating your offline and online campaigns using hashtags. And I thought it was particularly important to share that one with you. By the way, if you've uh, ever been to Australia, you'll know that the word root has a different connotation there, which is kind of the center of all of this. And uh, it's, it, the, the, there's been kind of a few sweet comments over the last couple of days. The environment minister in, uh, in Australia came out all... Uh, uh, all, all shouty about how this is a terrible image to give to, to, give to tourists, and Sportsbet have said that uh, they don't see what's wrong with uh, the Wallaby giving a lion a cuddle. <laughs> which, all of which talk about the Lions tour, really, and those set of events uh, brings me to the theme of the talk, which is Twitter brings you closer. So in this case, I was talking about Twitter bringing you closer to uh, events halfway around the world, sporting events in this case, uh, or, to, or to players on, on the field, but it could also bring you closer to street demonstrations in Istanbul, or it could bring you closer to a writer you'll never meet in Argentina, or, or to a politician in, some, uh, in, in your own country or, or some other country. It brings you closer, and uh, I think if I had to describe what the essence of Twitter is in just a few words, it would be that. Twitter brings you closer. And it's a big network. The scale is enormous. We announced around Christmas time that we had passed the 200 million active user mark. So the scale is large, and that's important. But another thing to think about on top of the scale and the reach that you get with that scale is the mindset of the user. So if you're a marketer and you're trying to think, you, you, it's helpful to put yourself in the mindset of the user 
when they're using the product, the platform. And in the case of Twitter, Twitter users tend to have a discovery mindset. So when they open up their phone or they open up the app, they, they're usually curious. They don't necessarily know what they're looking for, but they're curious, they're open to listening and to learning something new. And uh, that's, a, that's a golden marketing moment there, to try and capture somebody's attention when they're curious and they want to learn something new, even if they don't yet know what it is. And so what does this mean for the UK? Well, in the UK, we have more than 10 million active users. In fact, we announced this time last year that we had more than 10 million active users, and we've been growing very fast since then. So the scale is, is large, and the UK is uh, one of the most advanced markets for, for Twitter worldwide. And mobile, I think, is an interesting angle here as well. More than 80% of our active users in the UK are active on mobile. Now, why does that matter? Well, um, one thing to note is that we see that Twitter users who are active on mobile tend to be more active than those who aren't. So they engage more with the content, they log on more, they use the app more. And so, again, if you're a marketer and you want to reach these people on the go, that's an interesting thing to bear in mind. And, um, and reaching people who are on the go using mobile uh, or, or reaching them in a, in a real-time live moment is not always as difficult as you might think. It doesn't always require um, resources. It can, it, can, it can be done quite simply. And here's one simple example from, um, from Halo London. How many people have used Halo here? OK, so maybe about, about half. But for those who haven't, uh, Halo is a, a great app on your phone for, for hailing, booking cabs, and paying for it online. And just, just have, a, have a quick look at the tweet there. And it's kind of based around the rain and the weather. Now, I wouldn't recommend tweeting about the weather normally, but Halo do, do it for a reason. So they know that uh, a, a massive driving factor of their customers' behavior is the weather. If it's raining, people are less likely to walk down the street to the tube station, they're more likely to want to book a cab in advance, and they're more likely to look for this app and maybe download this app. So this, this tweet really is an example of a simple, effective one. It's nothing fancy, nothing flashy, it's not, not you know, they're, they're not going for humor in this particular one, but it's extremely effective. And Halo operates in a number of cities around Europe, and they've found that using Twitter, they can get cost per downloads of 80% cheaper than other media with simple, timely, effective tweets like this. And it doesn't require any resource to do this well. You just have to keep your eyes and ears open. So let's dive into... Some more, uh, some more detail about Twitter users. We've, we've said that there are a lot of them, and they, they have a discovery mindset. So this is my profile here. And, and somehow, every Twitter user has unique Twitter DNA, a signature that's unique to them. And it's based a lot on who they follow and what they tweet about. So in my case here, I, I follow more than 500 different uh, entities and people, some I know, some I don't know, organizations. And I tweet about, I tweet about uh, Twitter and media and tech and sport and mostly shite. <laughs> so that's kind of my Twitter DNA. And everyone's is different. I also take actions on a number of these tweets. So I retweet some things, I favorite other things, I reply to other things. So the combination of all of these things and my interests goes to build up my, my interest graph. And that's really what my interest graph looks like. There's, there's a lot of Twitter, there's news, there's sport, football, rugby, there's um, Norway, my wife is from Norway, Renata on the right-hand side is, is my wife, who you'll see is smaller than Twitter, news, and football, um, which, so it's, it's not to scale in this case. This is a really accurate representation of my interests. And for anybody who has uh, used Twitter actively for even a few weeks or months, um, there's a very, a very accurate interest graph built up there because it's not based on what you say you're interested in. It's based on what you are interested in because you're actively following and un unfollowing along the way. So we think Twitter is the shortest distance between you and your interests. And in Twitter terminology, you is represented by your at handle, and your interests are represented by the hashtag. So the hashtag is an organizing device 
for sorting conversations on Twitter. And, and in many ways, if Twitter were a large TV, the hashtag would be a TV channel. Now, moving on to the brands and businesses, um, people clearly want to follow businesses. They want to follow brands. Now, here are some of the top categories that people want to hear from. And, uh, and we find that 64% of Twitter users in the UK actually follow at least one brand. And on average, they follow seven. So people are freely choosing to follow businesses um, with, with commercial interests. And, and here are some of the top categories. So, so TV, um, TV, TV shows, and uh, uh, TV stations are, are, are near the top. Um, you can see retail, tech, news, fashion. These are just a few of the top ones, but actually there are a number or more that have quite high percentages above, above 20%. And so I think the main, the main takeaway here is that people really want to follow. They really want to follow businesses, and they're choosing to do so. And then you might ask, well, why do they, why do they follow um, these businesses? And by the way, one of the things I, that was on the last chart was exclusive content. And I'll just speak a little bit about that one in, particu um, uh, in, in particular. Sorry, on this slide. The ex exclusive content is one of the reasons why people choose, um, choose to follow brands. And if you're a business or you're representing a business, try and think of ways to make it valuable to be your follower. So it may be just giving access to information earlier or giving access to something through Twitter that you only give through Twitter. But in some way, some exclusivity or timing advance or an insider perspective is, is a very useful way to make it valuable to follow your brand or your business. And, and we find these are, are some of the big reasons for why people want to, want to follow um, want to follow businesses. So product updates and information about your company are, are two really big ones. Exclusive content being a really big one as well. Fun and entertainment is huge. It drives engagement. And you'll see a lot of these examples later on. Um, and that may work for your business. Don't be intimidated by it, though, because not everybody's a comedian. Not everybody can be funny in every single tweet. It may be part of your voice as a, as a business, but it may not be. And I think it's reassuring to see that there are many other reasons as well why, why people follow and choose to follow businesses and brands. So I think the point here, without getting bogged down in the stats, is, is that you, you just need to find an angle or two and find a voice that's authentic for you, and followers will come. Now, just before I bring it back to where I started the, the the talk on Twitter brings you closer. I just want to really summarize what I've said. So we talked about the scale of the network, more than 10 million users in, in the UK, and they have a discovery mindset. So a large number of users, discovery mindset, they're open to hearing new messages. They're very active on mobile. In fact, the vast majority are on mobile, and mobile users tend to be more engaged. And they're open to hearing from brands. They're open to hearing from businesses. They're choosing to do so very actively. And so the combination of all those things together really is marketing gold. And so you as marketers in the room, or if you're helping clients, then it's a case of really finding a way to connect with those users in a way that's authentic and timely. And, and then just bringing it back to, the, to where I started the talk on uh, Twitter brings you closer. I think there's no better example that I've seen in the last year on Twitter than Chris Hadfield. Have people seen the tweets from... Chris Hadfield. So just for, for anybody who, who hasn't, he's a Canadian astronaut who's, who was up on the International Space Station for six months and just came down recently last month. And over those six months, he built up his follower base from, I guess, a few hundred to, to nearly a million by sending out these photographs of uh, the Earth as he orbited every day. And this photograph here is of the UK and Ireland. And you can see the northern lights over the Arctic at at the top as well. And um, I think there's something kind of beautiful about seeing your hometown from space. And I can imagine most people in the room here, uh, your hometown is down there somewhere. You can see the lights at the, at the north there in Scotland. You can see the Edinburgh-Glasgow line. And then going down the right-hand side, you can see Newcastle, and then into Manchester and Liverpool and Birmingham. And, and London, and my hometown, Dublin, is over on the left-hand side. And this is an amazing view. 
Uh, I think it took him about six months to get a cloudless night, by the way. But it's an amazing view. And, and it brings me back to what I said at the start, which is this unique perspective, this ability to see the world through somebody else's eyes, this first-person perspective is remarkable about Twitter. About 500 people have ever been in space. In the whole history of humanity, about 500 people have been in orbit. And one interesting thing about what Chris Hadfield did, why was it, I mean, he was about number 500, why was it that he became, at least for a little while, almost a household name, he was on front pages of the newspapers all around the world, he definitely did more for the space program in terms of PR than anything since the shuttle 20, 30 years ago. Why was that? Well, I think it was because not only was he using Twitter, he saw what his unique perspective was. And actually, his unique perspective was not up in space looking out at the stars, taking pictures of the stars far away. He realized that his unique perspective was in space looking back. Looking back at the Earth, taking pictures of the Earth. And there was something amazingly emotional and resonant about that. And he got to a million followers from a few hundred. So that's the kind of thing that I think you can only get on Twitter. And I hope throughout the, the rest of the day, you'll hear a little bit more about how you can apply that to your work when you go back to your agencies and, and help your clients. So thank you very much.